Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you for today and for this time that we could be in your presence. Lord, we lift up Pastor Connie and Pastor Bruce to you, Lord. We are asking for your blessing to be on them this morning. Uh, that as Pastor preaches, that you would anoint her that you would give her revelation, that you would cause people to be healed and set free from every infirmity, from every bondage, Lord. That every person in that place would be free to go home in freedom, Lord. And Father, we ask you to bring them home safely. We praise you. We thank you for taking care of them, for, for protecting them against any kind of bugs or anything that would try to attach themselves to them. We command any kind of virus, any kind of germ to die the instant it touches their bodies in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray this morning for us. Father, I pray that you would help me to speak the words that you want spoken. And I pray that you would open our ears and our hearts to hear you, to receive your word. Father, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I titled this message, No One Likes to Be Lied To. You know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people out there uh, saying there's no right, there's no wrong, but just lie to one of them. And I mean right away, they'll be like, that's wrong. You shouldn't lie to me, right? <clears throat> and uh, so is lying wrong? Well, by God's standard it is, right? We, we can measure all kinds of things by many different standards, but the only thing that really matters is God's standard. And there's a great confusion in the day and age that we are living about what is right and what is wrong. And so I want to take a look at that. And if you're online, I hope, as well as those here, I hope that this will help you to understand there is right. There is wrong. And that God loves you. No matter how many wrongs you've done. Because if you think you're perfect, well, hopefully you won't before I'm done speaking. Not that I want you to feel condemned. I don't. But I just want to make sure you are in reality. You see, I was taught all my life that there was no God. There was no creator. So lying was a lifesaver for me. I mean, I could just throw it out there. It worked wonderful. Everything was just a big accident, right? Or a big bang. Talk about your lies. That is the whopper of all the whoppers. That's the biggest lie that's ever been told. Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> In the beginning was the tree of life and the tree of death. Adam chose death. You just got to think. Come on, dude, you got to be kidding me. Really? You can be forever with God in this beautiful place, or you can die? Yeah, give me some of that death. Joshua said, choose today, life or death. We'll come back to that in a minute, but uh, we're going to be in the book of First John today. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there with me. First John chapter 1 is where we'll start. And uh, the Apostle John wrote this book, not John the Baptist, 
but the one that laid on Jesus' chest, the one that got his feet washed by the Savior, the one that was always saying he loved me the most. Hallelujah. John writes to us in 1 John about what real life is and how we can have it. And so I hope to go through some of this text with you today and help you to get an understanding of your relationship with our Creator. Amen? So I'll just start. And I'll be reading out of the King James. I know it's a little bit archaic. I know it's a little bit hard to understand for some people. It's what I know. It's what I've studied all my life. And uh, so it's what I use. And I will help you with some of the words and, and some of the sayings to help you to understand it. Okay? Hallelujah. That which was from the beginning... That's Jesus. He was in the beginning. In the beginning, there was nothing but Him and the Father and the Holy Spirit, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. So John held Jesus in his arms. Can you imagine to hold the creator of the universe in your arms, to have him wash your feet. Oh, hallelujah. That's who he's talking about. For the life, or Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? Jesus is the life. The life was manifest or made known, and we have seen it and bear witness and to show you that eternal life. So he's going to show us eternal life and what he's written here. Which was with the Father and was made known to us. That we which have seen and heard, we do declare unto you, so that you may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you so that your joy may be full. Everything that Jesus said to John, everything that Jesus has ever said to any human was for one purpose, and that was so that your joy could be full. Now, I'm not talking about your happiness, okay? There's a difference between joy and happiness. And that's a whole different sermon, but it, joy comes from in your heart. You can be dying in the desert with nothing to eat and have joy. Many, many people have died for Jesus in a torturous way with great joy in their heart. Amen? And at the same time, many people who have everything have so much sorrow that they want to kill themselves. Right? So joy is about what everything that Jesus says to you is about. He didn't say don't do this because he didn't want you to have fun. He said don't do it because it will hurt you or it will hurt somebody else. Verse 5 says, This then is the message which we heard from him, from the Creator, from God Almighty, Jesus Christ. And we declare unto you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. There is not one shady place in him. Have you ever met any shady characters? Maybe you were a shady character. I know I was. Hallelujah, I was full of shadows. Actually, I was past shadows. I was quite dark. 
And, uh, <clears throat> but God is nothing like that. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So this is so important that you understand this. Walking in the light, what does that mean, you know? Does that mean... uh, You get saved and you do this? No, this thing will crush you the day you get saved. Three months later, this thing will crush you. Three years later, this will crush you. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But you know, uh, you don't just take a five-year-old and tell him to set the world weightlifting record. It just can't be done. Now, if you let them grow up, maybe they will set the world weightlifting record. But not a five-year-old, not a two-year-old. And when you first get saved, the Bible says that you are newborn babes. Spiritually, you are newborn. You don't know anything about God. You know, when I got saved, I didn't know there was a God until that day. I've been taught all my life there's no God. All of a sudden I meet God. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. There is a creator. A few days later, I heard that there was a devil. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. There's somebody that's actually working against me? Sure enough. But walking in the light, so when I got saved... The Lord said two things to me. He said, I want you to quit partying. Intuitively, I knew he was saying, I want you to quit drinking and quit doing drugs. And I said, okay, I'll do that. And so all I had to do to walk in the light was not drink and not do drugs. Very simple, right? That's all I had to do. I still cussed like a sailor. I still did everything else just the same as I'd always done. I just didn't drink and I didn't do drugs anymore. A few weeks into my new life with Jesus, and man, it was great. I was celebrating. I had joy. It was so wonderful. And then one day he said, "Uh, I don't want you to steal anymore. And I'm like, well, okay. I mean, I stole from everybody, my friend. I stole from my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, my best friend, my worst enemy. That's how I made my living, halfway. The Bible says, let him who stole steal no more. So now God has given me new life. And now, if I want to walk in the light, I cannot steal, I cannot drink, and I cannot do drugs. As long as I do that, me and Jesus are just like this. Everywhere I go, no matter what I do. But if I decide I'm going to steal out of an old habit or whatever, That fellowship is broken instantly. And I'm walking in darkness. Or I'm walking without the light. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing it my way. If we say we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we're lying and not doing the truth. That's what that comes down to. That's what that is talking about. Truly, our fellowship is with Jesus and the Father. There's no shadow of darkness in him as long as we're walking in the light. There's no shadow of darkness in us. 
Now let me tell you, there, you as you read this, it's going to lay some weight on you. I don't believe it's weight that God wanted laid on you. Okay? That's why I suggest to everybody who gets saved, don't read the Old Testament. Do yourself a favor. Start in the New Testament. Read about how wonderful Jesus is. Amen? Read about how he healed the blind. Read about how he saved the sick. Read about how wonderful he is and begin to get an understanding of the character of God because the Bible says that he is the express image of the Father. You can look at what Jesus did and that's exactly what the Father will do. Amen? Verse 8 goes on and it says, <clears throat> oh, I'll just throw this in there. So, foolish jesting. Okay? So, I used to be able to foolish jest. And say, oh, you look funny, blah, 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 whatever. Right? But then the Lord dealt with me to stop doing that. And I just got to tell you, sometimes I still do it. The other night I was with a, a person and I did it twice. But immediately I could feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit and immediately I said, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Now I'm right back in the light. I'm right back in perfect fellowship with the Father. Now, if I tell him, no, I'm going to go around and, and harass everybody here today. Well, now I'm not saying that so that you can live that. Because you may not be ready for that. You've got to keep in mind, I was saved for, you know, 30 years, 35 years before he dealt with me about that. Okay? He's not, he's not in a rush. He knows... He knows what kind of plant you are. He knows where you grew up or where you were planted, however you want. You know, uh, you can plant corn here. I was told that this is perfect growing for corn. Perfect place to grow corn. Perfect soil. And then you can go plant some corn in Arizona. And you, I hope you don't expect the same results. Because you're not going to get the same results. Some people were like me. They were born, they knew nothing about God until they were grown. They grew up in a dry place. And they're starting from a much lower standard than maybe you're starting from. Maybe you grow up in a home with Christian mother and father and grandparents and all that, and you had a knowledge of God before you... Had, and, and you understood his ways before you ever gave your life to Jesus. Well, then you would be like in Nebraska. Amen? I hope you don't get that confused. I'm not saying if you're from Nebraska, you have a good upbringing. But it's a good place to grow corn. That's all I'm trying to say there. Amen. Amen. So if we walk in the light, we have fellowship. If we say we have no sin, you're a liar. If anybody in here thinks they're sinless, I'm just going to tell you right now, you're not. There are people that sin against me almost every time I see them. With their mouth, with their actions, whatever. I don't tell them about those things because I don't think they're ready for that yet. I just, I don't worry about it. Amen? I just say, praise the Lord, bless them, Lord. It's okay, they don't understand yet. Right? Now, if God ever deals with me to share with you about something in your life, I will try and do that in a kind, courteous way. But he wants you to know that you are not perfect. And I know most of you think you're not perfect, but some of you might think you are. 
you might think you've arrived. Jesus is the only one who carried the full weight of this book. And he didn't do it until he was of full age. When he was of full age was when he was able to completely lay down his life and die and bleed and suffer for us completely. Amen? Will we ever get there? I don't know, maybe. I'm not even sure. I hope so. Right? <laughs> Hallelujah. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so that's what I said. Like I, and when I say, oh, I'm jesting, it's like, I'm sorry, Lord. I get right back in fellowship with him right away. Amen? Any sin that I commit, I immediately turn back to him. Now, there was one thing I didn't say, and that is uh, <clears throat> if we walk in the light as he is in the, uh, verse 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Uh, so, it's just washing us. He won't even tell you about it, maybe, Right? But one day, when he's ready to talk to you about it, he'll tell you. One day, he may say to you, I want you to quit jesting. I want you to quit saying things carelessly. And then at that point, that will be where your responsibility lies. Amen? Verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And so we know that we've all sinned. Amen? And uh, we're not going to get perfect, but his blood will cleanse us. You won't be perfect, but you can be clean. Amen? He wants us to walk in a place of cleanliness. And we know pretty much when we're doing that, John 2, 1 says, My little children, these things I write unto you so that you do not sin. So he's not saying, I, I said all this so that you could go out and sin and have fun. He said, no, I wrote all these things so that you won't sin. But if you do sin, it says we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. That word advocate uh, means uh, like a lawyer uh, or that he pleads our case for our pardon for whatever we do sin verse 2 says and he Jesus is the propitiation now that's a big word and it's not an easy one to understand but what it means is price paid he paid the price amen he is the price paid or the anointing the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Right here is a, everybody's opportunity to choose life today. If you're here, if you're online, wherever you are, I just want you to know right now, because of what Jesus did, you can choose life. You don't have to Keep eating from the tree of death. Jesus paid the price for our sins and also for the whole world. Every sin is paid for. And hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. What is his commandments? To walk in the light. Not to try to perform this. I'm telling you, this will crush you. And people will lay stuff on you, you know. They'll come up and you say, Oh, did you know that the Bible says this? 
And you're like, you're not even ready for that, you know. You're sucking on a bottle, and they're trying to stuff a steak down your throat. It's like, I don't got any teeth yet. Man, give me a break. But when we're young, we don't know that, and so we just get... And then we try to carry that weight. And it pushes us down and down and down and down. Thank God that he loves us and he's always helping us, even in spite of other people's accidents. Amen? This is how we know that we know him, because we walk in the light. Whoever says that he knows him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. The truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word in him or in them truly is the love of God perfected. And hereby we know that we are in him. See, that's the wonderful thing. You, you meet a new Christian and I mean they will hug everybody. The love of God is perfected in them. Bam! Just like that. Amen? You remember that day when you got that? It was wonderful. Amen? But then we get some of that stuff put on us and now we're not so sure we want to love on people because they might say something else to us that we aren't really ready for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He that says he abides in him ought to also walk himself as Jesus walked. Brethren, this is really fellow human, the old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. The word that you heard from the beginning was like God created the heaven and the earth, right? His, his word has never changed. That's one reason I was able to stay saved. I mean, I, that was one thing that excited me so much was that when I heard that God would never change, that every day he would be the same, my life, I'm like, I'm in. I can deal with that, you know? This getting beat up for what I did yesterday and got patted on the back for is the pit. You never know what's right, what's wrong. The old commandment. In the beginning, God created. I put that in there. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness has passed and the true light now is, It's in you. If you've received Jesus, the light is in you. Amen? If you step off into darkness, get back in the light. It's so easy. He, he couldn't have made it any simpler. He that says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even till now. Hmm. That's a good place for everybody to say, Oh me, or oh my, or help me Jesus. Love has nothing to do with hate. Just like light has nothing to do with darkness. He that loves his brother abides or lives in the light. And there is no occasion of stumbling in him. That means I can walk around as long as I'm in as long as all he said to me is don't do drugs, don't drink alcohol, and don't steal, I can walk around and I am in his light. And I can ask him anything with confidence. And he will listen. Now I gotta, I gotta tell you, some baby Christians ask, ask for some crazy stuff and he said, I'm not gonna give you the car keys before you're old enough, right? And so he also said, I'm not going to give you anything that will hurt you. 
And so if you've asked for a million dollars, ten million dollars, fifty million dollars, five hundred oil wells or whatever, and you haven't received them yet, it's okay. They could still be coming, but maybe you're just not ready for the keys to the car yet. Amen? It's all right. He loves you. And he is growing you. And you are growing and God is blessing you. And he's blessing your family, whether you see it or not. He is blessing your family. He's blessing everybody. That's what God is. He is a blesser. That's all he can do. He doesn't know how to do anything but bless and create what's very good. No occasion of stumbling. But he that hates his brother or his neighbor is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness blinds us or blinds his eyes. And so uh, this is what happens to us. Maybe hatred gets into us. It's pretty easy to do, right? I mean, I carried truckloads of hatred into the kingdom. But he hadn't dealt with me about hatred yet. Because I hated everybody and everything almost. I mean, you know, it was incredible. I had hatred to the ceiling and, and to the back. And, and, uh, but he didn't say, oh, I can't have fellowship with you. You have hatred. But there did come a day that he said, uh, you know that unforgiveness you have for this person? I want you to deal with that. And then another day, it was another person. Maybe ten years later, it was another person. He doesn't just throw it all on us at once. Thank God. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. He gives us, he knows what we can handle, the Bible says. And he will never give us more than we can handle. So, Maybe you have hatred for somebody and you're thinking, well, I'm out. Well, you don't have to be. Jesus wants to help you. Amen? I tell people all the time, if they say, I can't forgive that person, I say, well, can you ask Jesus to help you to forgive them? Can you just take a little baby step? And usually they'll say, well, I could ask Jesus to help me. Doesn't mean I'm going to, but I'll ask him. Perfect. That's a good start. Their eyes are blinded. See, no one believes that this phone created itself. Right? And no one believes that it just happened. It just... There it is. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, if they have an IQ of 10 plus, they wouldn't believe that. But, just one cell in my body is infinitely more complex than this. We're talking about one of the tiniest things in creation is infinitely more complex than this cell phone. Now multiply that by infinity, and you have our universe. But billions believe that it came from nothing. That it created itself. Now do you see why I said that lie was a whopper of all the whoppers? Oh my goodness. Jesus, help us. You've got to be blind to believe something like that. Walking in darkness makes it so we can't see what is real. That's why it's so important. If you sin, like if I went out and, I'm not going to say did drugs, because if I did drugs, I would probably be in a lot of trouble long before that ever happened. I started down there, you know. Uh, but if I decided I could just start foolish jesting with everybody, 
despite what God had shared with me, I would be in darkness just like that. Because I am choosing to do it my way and not his way. Some are walking in darkness because they hate somebody. But Jesus wants to help you to forgive them. For others, it can just be envy, or I want to have fun, or I want to do it my way. Please listen to me. If you're online, or maybe 10 years from now, somebody will be watching to this, listen to me. Your ways will wreck you. I know, I tried it. And I've watched it for over 60 years. Every time I see people do it their way, their life is a wreck. It's a disaster. It never works. James 3.14 says, If you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, do not glory and do not lie against the truth. Now I want to look at that part, lying against the truth. Doing your own thing is just that. It's just lying against the truth or fighting the truth. Paul said, Who are you, Lord? Jesus said, I'm Jesus. He said, Isn't it hard to keep kicking the cactus? I kind of like it. (laughs) Sounds like Adam, huh? To Christians, this scripture is to Christians. Some people won't agree with me, but uh, I would certainly be glad to discuss that with them. And that's Luke 12, 45 and 46. Jesus is speaking. He said, but if that servant says in his heart, my Lord will delay his coming and shall begin to beat or wound the men servants and the maid servants and to eat and to drink and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day that he is not looking for him and in an hour when he is not ready and will cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Now, the reason I say this is written to Christians is because it says a servant. To be a servant of Christ, you've got to be a believer. Amen? And uh, whoever calls Jesus Lord, right? So these are believers. They aren't just anybody. And uh, they have willfully said, I'm going to do it my way. I don't care who I walk on. I don't care who I hurt. I'm going to do it my way. My Lord's not coming back today. 1 John 3, 11 and 12 says, This is the message that you have heard from the beginning. From the very beginning. The message we heard from the beginning. That you should love one another. That's the message. It all comes down to loving each other. Well, not all of it, but a lot of it. Part of it, you've got to love God. Not like Cain, who was of the wicked one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because his own works and deeds were evil. The message is love. God's law is love. It's always been that. That's all. He is love. He can't hate. He loves us. He died for us because he created us. And he died for us when we The Bible says we're at war with him. We hated him. He's like, it's okay, I love you anyway. Amen? And that you can tell as a Christian grows because you can do stupid things to them that would start a fight, 
when I was first saved. And he, they'll just walk away just like nothing was ever said or done. Oh, it's okay. They won't even say anything to you. You won't even know that you hurt them. And they'll just go say, Lord, I praise you. I thank you. I love you. See, that's the whole commandment. Love your creator. Love all of humanity. You want to walk in the light? It's that simple. It's not so simple, is it? Takes some growing, doesn't it? But we can start loving now. We can go be nice to everybody. You won't be perfect at it, will you? No, if you think you will, go back and read 1 John 1, 7. If we say we have no sin, Right? But this is the perfect time to start trying to be like your heavenly Father. Amen? He loves you so much. He loves us so much. He loves me. It's incredible. You think about it. It's like, wow, God, I don't get it. But okay, I'm in. I like it. Amen? Hallelujah.